My Amplified Unit, Salud! Welcome to the Amped Up Podcast for Monday, September 9th. 2024 a big return tonight on monday night raw we'll talk all about it in this upload and program alert later on on the channel i hope to anyway for my channel members have a pop-up live stream at least a half an hour so if you are a channel member become a channel member stop by say what's up on the live stream just a few hours away. I hope to be live before Monday Night Raw for a full Raw preview show because that's not going to be in this upload. Uh, Usually my upload before Raw, we talk all about the show, uh, what they have on the card, what needs to happen, but that's not going to be this upload. Hopefully we can do that a little bit later. Channel member pop-up live stream, remember. So all my channel members, even if only for a minute or two, Stop by the live stream, say what's up to BC in the unit. For this upload, again, we'll talk about that big return to the show tonight. We'll talk a big drastic transformation on a WWE, already a WWE legend, should be a Hall of Famer. They just cannot, they can't get this deal together to put this dude into the Hall of Fame. But there's been a drastic transformation. Some people are saying he's unrecognizable. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I mean, you see the dude's face, you know, that's, that's, yeah. But there's definitely been an evolution as the years go on. And we'll talk about this transformation. I'll show you guys, man. It's unrecognizable. I don't agree with that word. But I will say absolutely I thought I was like, that's, there's no way, but you got to think too, dude's 55 years old, you know, father time waits for nobody. We'll talk about that. Hulk Hogan, when it comes crushing down and it hurts inside, Hulk Hogan, um, (laughs) more backlash. Everything this dude does receives nothing but criticism. Um, now you have Nicki Minaj saying she's going to drop the leg drop down on Hulk Hogan. Well, maybe not on Hulk. On the comparison to Hulk Hogan, Nicki Minaj said, uh-uh, Hulk Hogan blocked. We'll talk Nicki Minaj, Hulk Hogan, his new endeavor. Why all the criticism? It'll make a lot more sense when we start talking um, in that segment about Hulkamania. Uh, trying to run wild in this new space. Um, and we're going to start off with everybody's favorite topic. Okay, maybe not. Vincent Kennedy McMahon, VKM. Yo, yo, you're fired. Vincent Kennedy McMahon, you thought, you thought, you, you, you done on WWE television. No more Vincent Kennedy McMahon, but Vince McMahon Uh, Netflix is reviving Mr. McMahon, right? Vince is back in a big way. A lot of buzz. And this is going to be one of their biggest hits of the fall. No, no doubt about it for Netflix. If you don't know, if you've been underneath a rock for the last uh, several weeks, not a Dwayne Johnson, but an actual rock. And you don't know what's going on. Netflix, actually, when you think about it, the rock is pretty much a boulder within himself, but Netflix several months ago, re greenlit the Mr. McMahon doc. This was a documentary that was supposed to be just depicting Vince McMahon's journey through the pro wrestling world. Um, and getting everybody pumped up for the big raw move over to Netflix top of the year. But then the legalities came to the forefront. Netflix decided to shelf the project. There was a time where they said, it's scrapped. We're not even going forward with it. But then they took a breath and they said, well, wait a second. This is actually really good. We'll add on to it and we'll just change the narrative. And it was pretty evident that it was going to be a hit piece at that point. Um, and they were just going to, to rip Mr. McMahon Apart, And this, of course, we talked about this briefly, but we talked about it nonetheless recently in an upload about how WWE was not happy and how they're putting Hunter Hearst Helmsley in a very poor position. This is a dude that has to over the next three months, because that's it. You only have three months left on cable television. Then you go to Netflix. The same 
streaming company that is going to be airing Monday Night Raw from here on out for the next five years is the same company that is basically bashing uh, the owner of of your show, of your company for the last, for decades. Vince McMahon was the guy. It's painting WWE in a horrible light for the decades that Vince McMahon was in power. And now it's Hunter Hearst Helmsley that's going to have to answer a lot of this, right? He's the lead man for the next three months that has to promote Monday Night Raw on Netflix. It's not going to be the Netflix executives, the president. No, it's not going to be Nick Khan for WWE more than Hunter. And you know, with this documentary coming up in a few weeks and the tail off of that, right? Because for the next month afterwards, that's going to be the buzz. And it could not come at a worse time. Middle of September, where you have sweep weeks, right? This is where broadcast, cable, you have advertisers. They all congregate and they all see where the best business should be utilized. Where should I put my advertisement? What shows should we bring in? What shows should we cancel? What announcements do we have to tell our audience? Because this show is coming to our network. Now you all have to promote it. This is where Hunter Hearst Helmsley has to really get to work for WWE and Netflix and sell Monday Night Raw. And he's going to be answering a lot of questions now about this documentary that he wanted no part of. He doesn't even want to answer questions on his father-in-law. But now you're putting Hunter in a position where he can't just promote Raw. He's going to have to try to dodge, bob and weave Vincent Kennedy McMahon father-in-law questions. It's just a, a poor, <laughs> it's a poor way or a poor position to put Hunter Hearst Helmsley in. Because up to this point, he's been dodging it pretty good, right? I just want to focus on business right now. It's booming financially. Um, I don't want to I don't know the details. I don't I don't know anything about that. Meanwhile, he's <laughs> he's most likely breaking bread with Vince and Kennedy multiple times a week. We know how close Stephanie and Vince are. You think Hunter's not at the dinner table? Hunter admitted himself. Of course he still talks shop with Vince. It's his father-in-law. He's got a wealth of knowledge for decades in this business. So when he's stumped, he goes to Vince. When, he's, uh, when he needs some advice, he goes to Vince. He admitted they still talk shop. But even though he admits that, he still was able to bob and weave and say, I know nothing about this. Let's just focus on the business at hand. But now with the documentary, he really can't do that. The place where your show is ending up, Netflix, is literally putting a magnifying glass on Vincent Kennedy McMahon and the woes since he, since he has been gone from WWE and what put him out of WWE permanently. So Netflix is bringing back VKM, right? Vince is back in two weeks. Wednesday, September 25th, Vince McMahon is back. And all those questions that everybody tried not to answer, well, now Netflix is putting them in a peculiar position because now they have to answer this. Or it's going to be much harder to bob and weave because Netflix themselves are putting this to the forefront. Man, it's a shitty position to be in. But Netflix has revived it. It is being described, right? I think this was maybe Conrad Thompson. But it's being described with those with knowledge of what they've added in and the narrative that has now been pretty much put in play by Netflix. Uh, this is a quote. It's a hit piece that WWE won't like. It's with Meltzer and those folks, and it's an absolute double shovel burial, end quote. That was a quote. So Netflix decided to go full throttle, right? If they're going to powerbomb Vincent Kennedy McMahon, make sure he doesn't kick out at three. I just don't understand. I don't see how this bolsters the product in the most positive of ways to the audience at hand, right? Like you just got this show for the next five years. You just started working with this company and you start the relationship by showing that it's been ran by this dude for decades and basically saying the company has been chaotic and corrupt for decades. And now we're working with him. Watch our show. <laughs> we swear it's changed. His son-in-law is now in charge. It, it, I don't see how this places WWE or Netflix in the best of ways. And that's what we were hearing from the jump. It's the timing. Netflix wants to do this doc. They already had time and resources, financials invested into it, right? That's fine. 
The problem we heard with WWE and being so furious, and that is what we are hearing, by the way. WWE is not happy at all. The word we are hearing is furious. But from the jump, we knew that. The timing of it. The timing of it is what they were questioning more than anything. Why would you do this right in the middle of September? Sweet weeks, you have the broadcast, the cable, streaming, advertisers. Everybody is working out their fall, winter seasons, their schedules on their networks. I mean, this is a massive time in the TV world. And by TV, I mean streaming, all of that, including advertisers, promotional, marketing, all of it. This is a huge time for the entertainment industry. And they chose right now, right in the middle of September, knowing that this was going to draw a lot of buzz. I get that business side of it. But it's kind of right, like robbing Peter to pay Paul. <laughs> like you're, you're going to get buzz in a really good streaming numbers on this project. But you're also, you're risking damaging Monday Night Raw going to Netflix. I don't know how many like casuals are going to come over, see this and go, oh man, I got to start watching Raw, man. Vince is now out. I got to start watching this. All right, let me give this a chance. Or, oh, this company has been absolute dog shit for decades behind the scenes. I got to start watching. I heard it's a better climate <laughs> backstage. I don't know the, the timing of it. I can see why WWE is absolutely furious, especially Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Th this... Like, if you if you honestly have to do something like this, man, put it around WrestleMania. You know what I mean? So at least it can it can generate all the buzz. It will still get a massive pop in terms of streaming hours for the platform, for Netflix. But it can also kind of be lost in the shuffle with a lot of good stuff because it's WrestleMania, right? Or even Royal Rumble. How's that, right? So you already started on Netflix. You already got a few weeks under your belt. It's a big Rumble weekend. And then you see the Mr. McMahon doc. Royal Rumble, right? Meet in the middle at that point. But September, why you have to, pro especially this month and next month, but especially middle to end of this month, you really have to start promoting WWE on Netflix. This is the most important time in the, in the entertainment industry, September. And you choose now. So now everybody's got to talk about the Mr. McMahon doc and how bad WWE has been behind the scenes for decades. And you're not able to talk about all the, the good shows that are coming to, to Netflix for WWE. Hopefully good shows, right? We're still waiting on those. <laughs> but hopefully, right, when, net, when it goes to Netflix, they can say a little bit more, do a little bit more, get a little bit edgier. And hopefully it gets a lot more fun. So WWE, not happy about that. The, the return of Vincent Kennedy, right? Vince is back, whether people like it or not, man. He's going to get all the buzz for the next couple of weeks. The documentary is going to pull huge numbers in terms of streaming hours for Netflix. And, and then afterwards, man, all the buzz that's going to be there as well. It, Vince McMahon is going to be a huge topic of conversation. And on that note, interestingly enough, right? That's not the only way. A, a, a lot of fans are convinced it ain't just that area that Vince is back. So a lot of fans are, are pretty much convinced that Vince McMahon is back and has a hand in creative somehow. And they think this because the shows have just not been good recently, right? Monday Night Raw is, I mean, maybe you have a couple of of situations or stories or segments that are decent to maybe good and then the rest of the three hours is just it's not must see tv i i mean you could literally read the spoilers and not bat an eyelash and so drew mcintyre cm punk pretty good judgment day for the most part wyatt's we're still waiting we're hoping that this gets good but um, the Alpha Academy and American Made thing was rushed. So that wasn't as good as it should have been when Otis turned on Gable. That was just a little push. The crowd was like, that was it. And that was it. And then American or yeah, American Made, they became American Made and they were rushed into a feud with the Wyatts. So instead of do it, just doing one feud really good. American Made in the Wyatts or American Made in Alpha Academy. Instead of doing one feud really good, they tried to do two feuds and it ended up mediocre. So the Wyatts, the verdict is still out. 
The ladies on Monday Night Raw, they don't know what they're doing. Uh, they're just doing a bunch of tags, six mans, trying to get damage control to be heels one week, and then their faces because they get out healed by Sonya's group. And then when they turn faces absurdly, then they have the face damage control arguing with face Bianca and face Jade last week. So <laughs> their heels getting out healed. Then damage control is being out faced once they become faces. I hope this makes sense. They. The booking is all over the place, and that's why when the fans get confused, when people get confused, they just check out. They zone out because it becomes too complicated. And Monday Night Raw, every Monday, you just don't know. It, it, it's not like a fun, oh, we got to see what happens here. Oh, that's a fun direction, right? We don't know what's happening. This is like, you know they don't know what's happening, right? You, you want to believe it's long-term booking, right? <laughs> it's not. It's uh, they show up every Monday and they're just like, all right, what if we do this? What if we do that? And you're seeing that Monday Night Raw only has a couple of things that are actually interesting. The problem is it's a three hour show. Smackdown has nothing. Smackdown has absolutely nothing. Raw, you had to have Randy Orton go from Smackdown to Raw to have a match with Gunther. That ends in a shaking of the hands, by the way. That shows you how in flux this these shows are. That's a pay-per-view. You're one of your top heels, one of your top faces. They're shaking hands in mutual respect. And then on SmackDown, as I said, you're left with Cody Rhodes and no top heels. They still have to build Jacob Fatu. Solo Sokoa is not believable to many fans because he's lost 41 matches in a row after beating John Cena. So once you did that and then you tried to make him the tribal chief, fans were like, I just don't see it. And now they're trying to do it again for this upcoming Friday's big debut on the USA Network of SmackDown. You're going to see Solo and Cody again. But you're getting matches like that, so people aren't buying into Solo being a top heel. Then you're getting a weird PLE match with Kevin Owens and Cody, because there was no big heel. So Cody looked at his friend and said, do you want a title match? Owens was like, dude, I don't even deserve it. Have you seen my win-loss record? And Nick Aldis is like, eh, he's right, but I, we really have nobody else. Just take it. <laughs> so they have a match. The same event that Gunther and Randy shook hands, Owens and Cody hug it out after their match. So it's totally the mutual respect era. SmackDown, other than that, has nothing going. The mid card is so bad. You're just seeing matches like Melo and Andrade every single week or Santos in LA. Maybe they put them all in a triple threat or a fatal four way. Um, the women's division, Nia Jax is champion, but a lot of fans, especially casuals, they can't tell you that, right? Because it's, it's uh, like the, there's something there with Tiffany and Nia. But Nia with the championship is just not doing anything. It's not moving any needle. And speaking of, SmackDown's rating has dipped to basically 2.05 the last two weeks. It'll be interesting to see what they pulled this week. I don't have that right now, but um, maybe because it was the last episode ever on Fox, maybe they got back to a 2-1-2-2. Two, two, two. Um, but they also faced... Um, some football competition from uh, the Green Bay Packers, my Packers, and the Eagles. But that was on Peacock. You would have to actually go stream that. That was exclusively on Peacock. So I don't want to use that as too much of an excuse. Um, or an excuse at all, right? WWE still has to put their best foot forward. So the point is, these shows are just not... Like, we want to say things like business is booming, right? We want to say uh, Hunter Hearst Helmsley is cooking, right? We're all eating good. But when you think about the shows in totality, they're not good, and they should be. A segment or two that are good every show, that's not good enough. Because you have, I mean, on a two-hour show, you have bare minimum eight segments. On a Monday Night Raw three-hour show, you have bare minimum 12 segments. And if you're telling me you, you had two to three things that were good, it's not a good television show. So because of all of these weird decisions that are being made, like damage control, being out-heeled, and then they turn faces absurdly, and then they get out-faced this past Monday by Jade and Bianca, you have Giovanni Vinci showing up, right? That They promote it a little bit. They show him pulling up in the parking lot. He look, they, looks like they're going to make him a big deal. He gets into the ring, and he gets rolled up in three seconds by Apollo Crews. It's decisions like this. That are making a lot of fans go this. I mean, Hunter can't be that bad. Can he be? That's got to be Vince and Kennedy. It's got to be Vince. Vince is back. You're seeing it a lot more now. A lot more fans are claiming Vince McMahon is back. I'm going to put it to you like this. This is the truth. Vince is not 
back in WWE, at least not in a role, in a position. He's not roaming the hallways. He's not in gorilla position. Um, he's not the man behind the curtain like Wizard of Oz that's pulling the strings and at the other side, at the other end of the strings is Hunter Hearst Helmsley. That's not happening. What is happening is exactly what Hunter told you, though. Hunter has admitted, of course, he talks shop with Vince. It's his father-in-law. He said when he's stumped, when he has questions, he goes to Vince. When he needs advice on things, he goes to Vince. Of course, he's breaking bread with Vince multiple times a week. Stephanie is very close to Vince, unlike Shane and Vince. Stephanie's husband is Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Hunter has always looked up to Vince. That's like the dude's idol. So, of course, when the dude tells you they talk shop, believe him. Of course, Hunter Hearst Helmsley is being persuaded in many areas by Vincent Kennedy. Uh, I absolutely believe Vince is the reason we see a lot of things on these shows. But I'm not giving Hunter a total pass at all. Not at all. Right, Hunter Hearst Helmsley is head of creative. If it's a bad story, if it's a bad segment, bad character trajectories, you got to hold Hunter accountable. Just like if it's really good, we give Hunter Hearst Helmsley the praise. Whether he created it, it was his idea or not, he at least approved it, gave that final approval. So you praise that. So the buck stops, it starts and stops with Hunter Hearst Helmsley, but make no mistake about it, Vince McMahon is always going to have a say in WWE television and creative. As long as Hunter Hearst Helmsley, as long as his son-in-law is in charge, Vincent Kennedy McMahon is always always going at going to have a say in creative it's why you hear at the start of every monday night welcome everyone to monday night raw everyone knows that is a vince mcmahon demand it's why you still hear the term wwe universe it's why you still see some weird things like Strowman pushes nia jack's championship reigns fruit roll up 10 second victories it's why you still see a lot of what you see today vincent kennedy mcmahon is not just going to stop talking WWE and trying to run things, especially when his son-in-law, who he has groomed to be in that position, especially when he is leading the charge head of creative. So Vince is back is what we are hearing a lot of, right? Aside from Netflix literally bringing Vince back and making him the story, aside from that, No, he is not actually back in WWE, but I would bring up a better way to state it. He never truly left WWE, right? In in an official capacity, yes, he's out. Um, In a non-official capacity, if you think Vincent Kennedy McMahon has just just rode off into the sunset, not happening. Vince won't do that. It's not in him. So... You know, Vince is back. Oh, no, this and that. No, I do believe a lot of this is straight from Hunter, and and a lot of it is Hunter's botches creatively. But yes, absolutely. Uh, I do believe a lot of what you see, though, Vince McMahon has a hand in it. I do. And I think it's a little bit more than just like, oh, I would like it if this happened. I think, you know, I think they do. When Hunter says they talk shop, you got to believe him. Why would he lie? He's telling you, yes, he still talks WWE with Vince. You think Vince is just like, yes, I would do this, but uh, you're in charge now. Good luck with everything. No, Vince is probably like, do this, do this. And then then you got to do this. And then I want to see this person's champion. And then get to the pay-per-view. I want to be called at this point. Let me know when this happens because we're going to do this. That's Vince. So Vince is back. No, I don't. uh, That's not necessarily true. I would I would argue the case of did Vince really ever leave in totality? No, that's just that's the truth, man. And that's why I always say I don't think you're truly going to get a new WWE or the best WWE we can possibly have. I don't think you're going to get that until all McMahons are removed. And and that sucks to say because I'm a big supporter of Shane McMahon, for instance, but I just don't. I, I don't until McMahon's are just kind of out of the equation. I think you're always going to have just Vince attached to it because he can't just let it go. 
And and I always said, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, whether you like it or not, you may praise the dude, love the dude, that's fine. And we want the best for the dude because that means a better product. Um, but Hunter Hearst Helmsley is, <laughs> he's a McMahon. Before marrying Steph, he knew he was a McMahon, right? He knew where he, he wanted to be attached to Vince McMahon at all times. That's who he wanted to learn from. That was his role model. And then he married into the family. And I always call, we always have a lot of fun. We call him Paul Levesque McMahon. He's a McMahon. Um, and, and so you're always going to have fans going, I don't know, that was, that's Vince. I think Vince is back. When the truth is, he never really went anywhere. Le- you know, in a, a legal basis, yes. In a professional way, yeah, he took off. But you got to remember who's in charge. It's Hunter Hearst Helmsley. You got to remember what Hunter said. They talk shop. <laughs> and you got to look. Just look at what some of the things you're getting. Of course, that's Vince. That doesn't tell you, that's not rocket science, guys. You don't even got to go to a community college. You don't even got to graduate high school. Forget about a GED. You know that's Vince. So you're going to start to hear a lot, especially if these shows continue to be just awful. SmackDown just has no direction. Cody's title reign, everything just seems off. The tag team division is non-existent for the ladies and the dudes. Mid-card is just redundancy. Women's division needs so much work. If these shows continue on this way, you're going to start to hear a lot more Vince's back. Again, the better question is, did Vince really ever leave? Like, truly? But I always get a kick out of that. Vince is back. And you can't, you know, now you got to also hold Netflix accountable. Netflix is not doing WWE any favors, right? By making him the focal point when we should be talking about the big move to Netflix and all of our superstars that are going to be showing up. Legends, current superstars, superstars of the future, some NXT talent. No, we're going to put the spotlight on Mr. McMahon and show you how corrupt and chaotic the company has been for decades. Netflix did not help out Hunter and WWE. But they're they're in the create the buzz business, I guess. But but again, I don't know how this puts the company in the best of ways. When the buzz wears off with the Vince McMahon thing, are people gonna go, now I gotta watch WWE on Netflix? That's what they're banking on. Moving on! A big return tonight! A legend! So a lot of people feel a mixed way about the dude, but he's showing up. Brett the Hitman Hart! Bret Hart, I believe they're in, uh, where are they? Calgary, Alberta, Canada. We do expect a Natalia to show up tonight as well. It was kind of teased that I think Valkyria said, I know what to do. I, 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 I got an idea. I think it was to fend off Sonya's group or something like that. I, I, we do believe that's going to be Natalia. Brett could have something to do with Natalia. But Bret Hart returning, a big reason why, I guess, is the arena that they're going to be performing in is being torn down soon so this could indeed be the last time wwe and especially bret hart is able to appear in that arena so it's a a pretty cool thing where you kill two birds with one stone Um, bring bret hart back but also for a good reason for that canada crowd for that arena now i would not have him attached to anything with natalia right just have her come back in, in, in the valkyria sonia deville story uh, I would put him in there with Gunther, right? Gunther needs something big. You have to be reminded that Gunther is a top heel, heel, and a reason not to like the dude because he's a top heel in the company. And and Hunter Hearst Helmsley just, you know, he wants to muddy those waters and make it less fun. So Gunther is out there in promos calling Damian Priest street trash. He's calling Randy Orton a complete failure like his grandfather, his father, and he's the biggest failure of them all. And then at the PLE, Bash in Berlin, he's shaking Randy's hand. I don't know top heels that do that. Sergeant Slaughter wouldn't do that to Hogan at WrestleMania 7. Absolutely not. A heel Mr. McMahon after bashing Stone Cold Steve Austin wouldn't pick him up and shake his hand afterwards. Not going to happen. There was no segments where Vince would shake his hand and he would get stunnered. That was much different in storyline purpose. But you just wouldn't see things like this, man. You wouldn't see Big Van Vader picking up Sting and shaking his hand after the match. and it, You wouldn't see these things because it doesn't make sense and it makes it less fun and there's no reason for it. Backstage, shake, shake hands. Show that respect. But Randy Orton, a top face, when this dude just called you a failure, your father, your, your grandfather, all the, and, and you shake his hand, Gunther's a top heel, why is he shaking a babyface hand? 
And then Monday night, he's back into his heel role, right? I said a lot of things about Randy, and I was right, he says. <laughs> what the fuck? So, like, that handshake never happened? That's what I mean. They book for the day instead of long-term booking, long-term storytelling. Like, know the direction. The characters have to play that part beautifully in and out every single time. So, Gunther, you know, he, he has to... Tap back into that healdom, especially if you're going to have people like Cody beat him in the future or whatever baby face you want, man. Who's I don't even know what other matches are for. I mean, they already did the Randy Orton thing. Kevin Owens and Gunther make zero sense. Different brands anyway, although they don't care. They just brought Randy over out of nowhere. Kevin Owens, if Randy couldn't, is Kevin Owens doing it? Cody Rhodes is a matchup that people want to see. Dragonoff is not booked properly, so you're not going to get the fun that we had in NXT with Dragonoff and Walter. So who is it? Is Roman Reigns one day taking on Gunther? I don't know. CM Punk, I guess. CM Punk, Gunther. There you go. So if you're going to have those type of matchups and feuds, we got to believe, we, 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 you got to have that reason to be like, yeah, Gunther's got to lose. Shaking hands with Randy is only going to make fans look at Gunther like a Teletubby. Ah, oh, see, he's not that mean. He's a nice dude. No, that's Gunther, man. Bret Hart showing up and having a feud with him and, and Gunther in Calgary, Alberta, absolutely shredding on the microphone. Bret Hart, that is quality television. That generates heel heat. It'd be nice if Bret could take a few maneuvers, but he can't. He's had issues, obviously, stroke and concussion issues and... So I don't think he can even take like a, a wrestling punch or anything like that. That would be great, though, if like Ludwig could just like take out his leg, maybe. And all Brett has to do is just kind of fall. So maybe they can do something like that. But I would love to see him in a in a in a segment with like Gunther. Uh, that would be pretty cool. But Bret Hart is returning tonight. I'll have a hopefully in a few hours we can go live for my channel members. And hopefully we have the. Uh, We'll talk much more about the whole card in totality, Monday Night Raw tonight. See if anything is actually really good. But that is something that I thought was uh, pretty big, pretty newsworthy. Bret Hart, major legend returning. He has a lot to say about WWE, and it's usually not that... Um, it's usually not putting WWE in the best of light, right? <laughs> it's, it's usually ripping WWE and ripping Hunter Hearst Helmsley, but uh, I don't... You know, he's... He's always he's always found a way to come back in front of the WWE cameras, man. It's always good to see him. I, I do think he holds so much, such a big grudge with the whole way the Goldberg thing ran its course. It, it, I remember when it happened, and I it sucks, man. After everything that happened with the Montreal screw job, he goes to WCW and. He has a, a shitty run. He was booked horrendously by Eric Bischoff. And then Goldberg just, just kicks him upside his dome piece. And pretty much the career was done at that point. And, and he's held that bitterness for a long time. And then the bitterness with the Shawn Michaels thing and the, and the Vince McMahon. There's just been so much that has weighed on this dude. So every time he tries to take that corner and, and go the higher out and speak positively... It just, it's not in him. And soon thereafter, he's doing another interview where he's just like, screw Sean and Vince and Goldberg and WWE and pro wrestling. So, and it's always good to see Brett just like kind of happy and smiling and being in the moment and, and enjoying pro wrestling again. Brett Hart returns tonight. Um, How about this, man? You guys see this massive transformation? Batista. You're not going to believe this. I'll, I'll put up a post edit. I'll put up a, a a pic. This is wild. Some are saying unrecognizable, but that's not the case. Batista's face is pretty reckoned. You know Batista, bro. It's Batista. But his sizing? Wait till you see this. So this is what had a lot of people like buzzing. Like, that's not Batista, bro. Batista has shredded down in weight. There's a new pick. I guess this is like one of those Hollywood carpets, I guess. One of his premieres. I mean, Batista's crushing it. Batista is so good. If you would have told me, right, you're going to have a list of top-notch actors from WWE, right? And you said Rock, I would go, yeah, that's pretty, that's obvious. I, I mean, the way he was in WWE, he was destined for Hollywood. If you said John Cena, at first I would say no, but then I would go, well, actually, there's a there's definitely a place for John Cena in Hollywood. 
Batista would not make my top 3, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 list probably. He just wouldn't. Now, of course, he's t- <laughs> easily at the top. But Batista, would he was never really known for his mic work until the latter latter years of his career and really the latter months I mean that's when Batista really was coming into his own and that's what sucks because it was the tail end of his ride but when Batista was having that not just the the Triple H feud the things he did with Ric Flair back you guys remember him taking out Ric Flair backstage or when he was retiring when he was quitting I should say remember he quit he was in the wheelchair and he's bruised up and he's cutting that promo quitting WWE I mean this I mean, but I'm like, who is this? This is a Batista we've never seen. This is the best Batista we've ever seen. And then not long after, he was gone, right? And and it sucks. But you got to remember, he was already toward the tail end. I mean, just year-wise, he started late. Batista, you may not think this, but he's 55 years old, guys. 55. So even if you talk about Batista 15 years ago, you're talking about a 40-year-old dude. The body, I'll say this politely, the body adjusts when you reach 30, 35, and 40 and beyond. The body adjusts. I'm going to use a a nice word, adjusts. (laughs) And Batista was trying to put in some solid work at 40 plus. So a lot of people forget that. He's 55. You're not going to maintain that physique you had at 25. Not going to happen. Or a lot's going to have to get into it. Sometimes movie roles need you to shred down in weight. You know, you have to you have to go a certain nutrition wise, workout wise, you have to go a certain way to appease the production. Like if a role calls for you not to be a giant, a giant, you can't be a giant. If the role says you have to be a giant, you got to start pumping up, get a nutritionist, a Hollywood nutritionist. Rock will tell you all about it. And that's why you see you see a lot of these Mark Wahlberg. You'll see him kind of flux, right? They go a little smaller, then they get bigger. It's because they have really good nutritionists. Their workout plans are different. Um, and, and so this could be for like a movie role, or it could just also be his his body isn't exactly responding to workouts like they did when he was 25. But this Batista, absolutely. I had to do a double take. I was like, that's Batista? What the? F-? Like, I know it's Batista, but... How is it? And he looking good, by the way. I mean, the dude, the, the, look at that. The, 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 he's, he's rocking that black suit. He's, I mean, he's absolutely crushing the game. Not Triple H, not Hunter Hearst Helmsley, but he, you know, the, the Hollywood game. I, I mean, this dude went to Hollywood and I was, I was absolutely like, I, his movies are captivating. He's so damn good. And I've never seen that one where, what is it called? The Avengers or um, not Avengers. Ah, oh, it's in the freaking Epcot. They have a ride, man. The heck is that? With uh, is it Groot? I've never seen the movies. I just uh, I've ridden that ride down in Orlando. It's a it's like a roller coaster. I can't think of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. He's in those. I've never even seen those, and that's where a lot of people are like, "Oh, he's good in that role." I've never even seen that. I've seen movies like Stuber. Where he has to get this Uber driver and, and he, he's on this wild hunt. He's he, all these all these bad guys he's after and this poor Uber driver has to take him everywhere. It's hilarious. I've seen movies like that and a few others and I'm like, dude, Batista is absolutely captivating. Anyway, a lot of people are just like, whoa, what happened to Batista? Listen, he's 55. I think the dude's looking great. You know, it, it's, it sucks. You know, father time can suck. Absolutely. You know, you want to think of, you know, people think when people got the delts out and the pecs are banging out, and the biceps are rocking, you know, that that's healthy, right? When you're bigger and your muscles are popping off, that's healthy, right? When you don't have gray hair in your, in your, in your beard, that's healthy. But, uh, you know, father time doesn't wait for anybody and, and people get older. It's just what it is. So Batista's rocking a gray beard. And he's a lot smaller. It happens, you know, 55 years old, man. But uh, yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was interesting. Oh, BC, did you see Batista? <laughs> I'm like, whoa, Batista, man. You got to believe like a role that he's doing called for that. And, and, and maybe Batista believes he can get that back on, right? But Batista will be one of the first to tell you it's going to be a lot harder. At 55, your body is, is different. So you, you can lift as much as you want, but you ain't exactly going to get your 25-year-old body back. 
Batista, drastic con- uh, con for me. transformation. There you go. More coffee, BC. Drastic transformation for Batista. We wish him all the best, man. His movies are just kick ass. If you've never seen a Batista movie, you got to check him out, man. Um, what do you want to go now on it? Oh, Hulkamania. What you going to do, brother? So Hulkamania, man, he gets criticism for everything. And he has not made the, 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 mo- the best of choices and decisions in the past. But I always say this, as long as you don't make the same mistake twice, you're good, right? If you make the same mistake over and over, uh, that's, that's a trend. That, that's, that, that becomes a choice. Um, but, you know, a mistake, even as drastic as it is, if it's a true mistake, if it's something you didn't want to have happen, if it's something you truly wish you could take back, eh, you know, maybe you could take, you know, you take that under consideration. But something you keep doing over and over, no, th- then you're just being an idiot. You're being, you're being a douche. You're being, you're an absolute tool at that point. So Hulk Hogan, you know, there's a lot that he gets crushed for. People either really love Hulk Hogan. And they're so thankful for what he's done for the wrestling business, especially. And there's people that just will not give the dude another chance. Absolutely not. They've labeled Hulk Hogan. And that's your prerogative, by the way. I ain't here to talk you out of nada. I just know that Hulk Hogan gets criticism whenever he tries to do anything. And then <laughs> and then recently, uh, going to the RNC, flipped out the left. They were absolutely furious that Hulk Hogan was at the RN- is it RNC. I don't know what you call these things, right? The Donald Trump thing or the, uh, the Republican convention. Um, and that now uh, Hulk Hogan has this new beer out. It's called, I believe all American beer, I believe, correct? Something like that. All American beer. Donald Trump is promoting it, right? (laughs) Which got more criticism. Donald Trump is like, Hulk Hogan has new beer. Try it out. So people are like, you don't even drink beer, Trump. Uh, but I do believe Trump is really good friends with Hulk Hogan. That's probably why he's promoting the beer. But there is massive backlash because Hulk Hogan has beer now. Who cares? If you don't like Hogan, if you labeled him, if, if you think he's a certain way, that's fine. Be done with him then, right? If you truly don't like somebody, you just not care about it, right? <laughs> I always think that's funny. When people go, I, I don't like somebody, but I'm going to follow everything they do. I Because I, they're fans, right? <laughs> they're fans. So if you truly don't like side, like if you truly don't like a television show, if you don't, if you truly don't like somebody, you just don't, you don't watch, you don't pay attention. You move on to things you actually like, things that matter, things that are important. But everybody is just so quick to just, you know, jump on whatever Hogan's doing. He has a beer. Let it be. Don't buy the beer. Don't drink it. Don't follow Hogan anything he's doing. Just don't do that. I don't understand how that's, you know, uh, and we're speaking on it because that's one of the top headlines for for this Monday, September 9th. You know, that's what the Amped Up podcast is, taking some of the biggest headlines or some of the, the, the you know, the, the, the best, most thought-provoking conversation and, and putting that in the upload. For some reason, this was one of the top stories. Hulk Hogan has a beer and people are pissed off. People are pissed because he, he started a beer. Uh, a beer company or a product it's more like a product let him freaking be man. i think the funnier stuff the, the, the better conversation is not that hulk hogan has a beer the Nicki minaj hopefully in post edit we could put this up i think it was like uh i don't know if she was doing a live stream of some sort but Nicki Minaj had like a, like a bandana or something was on and her hair was down. And a fan had caught, I'm guessing it's a Nicki Minaj fan. Uh, they were having fun and, and they said she looked like Hulk Hogan. So Nicki Minaj, and Nicki was having fun by the way. She wasn't actually pissed, but she was like, uh-uh, you didn't just call me Hulk, Hulk Hogan. Oh, I'll give you Hulk Hogan. Blocked. She literally blocked the poor dude that made the, the joke. But if you look at it, it's kind of funny because you do get Hulk Hogan vibes, right? Uh, it, it was funny. Nikki had fun with it. The people she was in the video with were absolutely cracking up, and that made Nicki Minaj smile as well and start laughing a little bit. I don't know if she actually blocked the the person who made the joke, but she said many times, like, nope, block Hulk Hogan. I'll drop a leg drop on your ass, she said. <laughs> she said, I'll drop a leg drop on your ass. Nicki Minaj knows WWE, guys, knows pro wrestling. 
So that's why she knows Hulk Hogan. That's why she took that a little bit more to heart. She knows about his finisher. So, you know, I'm not going to pretend to be a big Nicki Minaj fan. I don't know the music or anything like that. Um, but uh, much respect for, for starting her own brand. I'll tell you that much, man. And even though I don't know, I'm not familiar with her music. <laughs> the fact that she's a big wrestling fan is pretty cool. But that was more funny than anything, man. Her like being called Hulk Hogan. Uh uh, no, you didn't. I'm going to drop a leg drop on your at blocked. That was funny. But, but the, the beer thing, Hulk Hogan has new beer. If you want to drink it, drink it. All American. Um, if you don't like Hogan and you don't want to drink it, don't even talk about it. But the fact that that was one of the biggest headlines, I'm like, what, really? <laughs> People are actually pissed off because Hogan has beer. Um, interesting. Um, <laughs> it's, it's R.A. Cyst beer. I can't say the word. Tube doesn't like it, right? R.A. Cyst. Put two and two together, a unit. Right, because of what Hogan has said in the past. So that's why a lot of people don't like Hogan. R A Cyst. Yes, that word. Tube really doesn't like it being said on the platform. So I can't say the word. R A Cyst. You know. Um, so if you truly think so, just don't buy the beer. You know, that's everything Hogan does, though, cannot become a controversy just because he's trying something new. Dude's 75 years old. I mean, he's going to try to do, that's how, Hogan's always been like that. Try to tap into every market. Speaking of R.A. Cyst MVP recently, by the way, this isn't even in my notes. It's just, I, I read this maybe like 20 minutes before we were um, about to pop off this upload. MVP recently stated that he never called Hunter Hearst Helmsley that word. R A cyst. <laughs> he has never, I have to say, man, the tube really doesn't like the word. Um, MVP says he did not ever call Hunter Hearst Helmsley that. You, he said, find the quote. You're not going to find it. There is absolutely no, no interview. He has never called him that. He said that a fan had called that out. A fan has acknowledged that they believe that Hunter was. And MVP just said, oh, you noticed things too, huh? Or something like that. Like, basically, he alluded to Hunter does a lot of those type of things that are along those lines. But he never actually outright called him that. So, MVP did clarify that. But he, he did double down that he absolutely alluded to such when responding to the fans. So, MVP is not a, a dude to back down from the comments that he says. MVP stands by him because MVP believes in... Believes in his words and, and, and what he stands for. And, and he's, he's seen a lot of things and he's not happy about it, man. He, uh, to him, Hunter Hearst Helmsley did a lot of shady things. And to this day, he questions the way that Hunter books black wrestlers. He has every right to, to feel that way. And <laughs> I mean, it, it, there's a lot of question marks after a lot of the booking. But you can say that about a lot. Most of Hunter's booking, unfortunately right it's just when you talk about what mvp is bringing to light uh it i mean you can't just pass it up. it's kind of like uh so then a lot of fans were like yeah dude i've noticed this this and this and mvp was like oh you noticed too huh like yeah connect the dots basically but he never actually called hunter that so he wanted to make that known he never actually just hurled uh words like that right he's much more uh, what's the word I want? He's not negligent in that way. You know, that's reckless to throw words like that. And and there is no basis. So the evidence speaks for itself. But he, he did not shy away from the fact that he's seen things and he's saying, you guys, you can connect the dots and see exactly where Hunter stands. So again, I don't know if that puts him in any better of a light with Hunter in the future. <laughs> I, I don't know, MVP going back to WWE, there's, I don't think MVP's in any hurry to try to say nice things just so he can get a job back. Uh, I think he's very happy right now actually being away from the company. And I wouldn't put it back, I, I, I do think you're going to see MVP, Bobby Lashley, and Shelton Benjamin together again. Cedric, I believe, just re-signed with WWE for his new catering contract or speed contract, right? It's like a contract where you'll see Cedric a couple times on WWE speed. 
And then a couple weeks, you can maybe see him in catering if you're uh, backstage at a WWE event. Other than that, uh, Strictly Business was trademarked by MVP. So you could see uh, some form of a reformation of Hurt Business, now called Strictly Business. Anyway, guys, that's what I got for you. This went a little bit longer than I uh, originally had planned. Now I got to push. Something's now got pushed back. I got to take care of that. But um, a little bit later the, today, this afternoon, this evening, um, I hope to do a pop-up live stream, maybe even if it's only for a half an hour for channel members. So if you're a channel member or become a channel member, uh, stay locked on the channel. Absolutely. Stop by, say what's up during the pop-up live stream. That'll be the chat will be for channel members. So it'll be cool. It'll be a way for BC to say what's up to my members who I always put um, who I always put at the top of this channel for sure, man. The board of directors, I call them. So it'll be cool to see all those gold cards, those amplified gold stars, those soon the gold coffees for channel members, man. I can't wait. They look so good. I hope they look really good after the names of my channel members, man, for two years and up. You get the gold coffees. I really hope they, they pop off. All right, guys, until next time, and there will be that next time. Top guys, we are out BC in the unit saying check you. Salud!